what the Nigeria proposed. Um, we shall follow the agenda strictly for today's meeting. We thank you and for your patience waiting this long for today's meeting. We had some little initial hitch with our technical department. We shall start with our, the opening prayer by Dr. Comfort in the top. Oh, good. Are you with me? Yeah, I know they call him. <laughs> Dr. Comfort, are you there? Hello? The woman I want to Are you hearing me? Okay. Can anybody lead us with a short opening prayer? Maybe she's not hearing it on her phone. Elder Nelson, are you there? Nelson, are you there? Check my phone is not on. Hello, is that Jay? Jay, are you there? Jay, be worry. Hello. Yes. Can you can you give us a short opening prayer? A short opening prayer, very brief. Nelson, a short prayer. Okay, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. So for our, Amen. Thank you for everything, for a, peaceful, for a peaceful deliberation for today. For the guide us as we are making our presentations today in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. 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 We move over to the next agenda, which is opening remark of the brief stroke brief of the project by the country director. As I said earlier on, my name is Tom Inkotaria and I and we, the team of the proposed American Heritage University in Nigeria. Do welcome you, our president, Professor Tony Ogyame, to our first inaugural interactive session. Welcome. I will start with a very brief story of how we came out this project came about and so that i don't think you I don't, I don't bore you i will cut it a little bit short we initially had a project for in portacourt to develop a housing scheme initially in our course of going to look for financiers in abuja by the grace of the Almighty God, we now, I now, we now met coincidentally with our principal, our proposed principal, Professor Tony Ogiamie, who also came to Abuja to source for land, to develop, to put up 
the, uh, the branch of the American Heritage University of Southern California. And as at that time, he had also gone to, he had also gone as far as getting the commitment fee to the NUC of a million naira, which you have to pay if you want to develop a private university. And he has done a lot of work. But as I, as I then, the financiers then, some of them didn't meet up. And there were issues regarding the allocation of land as I then. So we now had to propose to him of doing this development. Same development in Portacourt. It took us time. People were also proposals to him too, from Calabar. I met people from Acquire Bomb. I met people from Ondo State. Even as of now, those from Ondo State are still disturbing every day to move the school to Ondo State. But quickly, maybe the love God uh, he had for us, he now said, okay, it was going to come to Portacourt. While I was in the meeting with him in, in, the, in the South, in Abuja, people even came and he even told them he wants to go to Portacourt. The him as a then that said that Portacourt is not safe. It's not safe for, for any kind of business. They kidnap people every day in Portacourt. But as God had it, it's love for Portacourt. You must set up this last year, no, not, not last year, 11 months ago, and came to Patakot, and I approached the greater Patakot for land. Because the land which they gave to me initially, it was now found out that, it was found out that the government had not paid for compensation for that land. So they now had to offer us another plot of land. And I had to convince the state government Specifically, Ambassador Desmond Akawa, that they should come in with their own, with the land as their own equity, which they are the governor, and the governor gave an express approval for that uh, land. But as time went on and we delayed over the over the month, a month passed by, and coupled with the corona pa pandemic. He now said that no, we must pay for that land. That the governor is not giving them enough money for the agents that we must pay for them to give us. So we now got stuck again. But as far as God had it, we now spoke with some of our other colleagues. So we now had the plan B to have a land at uh, behind the airport at Ipo, which is being which is in the custody of Dr. Chukuma, is also a member of our planning committee. He's here with us. And is to give us 20 hectares of land, which will be government. If the government makes a rethink and say they want to change and donate their land as equity, then we will now have the government as our own plan A. If not, the plan B is to have their second land at Ipo. While doing that, we talk with the, this is an existing school being built by, I mean, built by late chief, which I shared the pictures recently on our page. And it has been, it was donated to the, it was donated to the Anglican church and the Samar community. We've gone there, the Samar community are very happy as their school for the campus B. And the Bishop of the Nigeria Delta Diocese has told us to write to him. We've written to him, and he has said he will call us for a meeting for this proposal. So we have an existing structure, an existing school with buildings already at as our campus B, but the first point we have to make is to get the land first 
But without the land, you cannot do anything about uh, university, private university. They have to come and see the land and give you provisional approval first. When you commence development, no matter how small, then you cannot off, they will not pay, give you the final approval. So we intend to do those things on the, do that on the first land. Then the campus B will also show it to the NUC. Thank God that Professor Tony Ogame has also showed us the contact which he has, because most of those people at the NUC are students. Even when we were in, in Abuja, we went to see the minister for for how um, for works, uh, Barista Fachola, who was also a student, because Professor Tony Ogame was the first dean of law in the University of Benin. He also went to see Omar Gege, who was also a student too, in uh, in the Ben. So, in that aspect, we didn't have any issues. Then, for the issue for the for the NEC approval too, he also went to meet the NEC registrar, and they discussed. So, when we are ready, they are set to go with us. So that is where we are. We are in Port Harcourt. Our next step too was to also do the because before any investor will want to invest in any of our development they must see the feasibility study of which we have talked with the consultant our consultant barista kalada apiafi has agreed to even do this um feasibility study for us he gave us a fee to, for us to, to do the project and at the same time he assured us that this project will fly because even when we started having this issue about um, coronavirus and uh, the pandemic, he called me and told me this issue, this school will, will fly very well because of it has an advantage. Already it is being doing, it is doing a cross border education, which is an online education already. So he assured us that once we are ready, we can fly. So we said, let us try and organize our house together first. After organizing our house, we cannot interact with our principal. So he will now give us the vision of the school, what we intend to expect of what the school we want to bring in, in terms of the technology and the style of education. Because if he does that, then we as the fran uh, franchisee of the school will now tow that part. So that is where we are as at now. We had a lot of challenges coupled with the pandemic, which has made everybody to be a little bit um, slow in terms of project financing. But thank God, we now have a direction of where we are heading to. And I believe that by God's grace, from this month and next month, we will start having good results from our interested financiers. Thank you. Thank you. Um, um, uh, item, item number two. Introduction, Introduction of the President of, President of, of Southern, Southern California. California. All the of that, I want to Professor Ogiamie, who is the president of American Heritage University. Welcome. Welcome. The floor is welcome. Thank you, sir. He can unmute himself. Yes. I'm, I'm glad that I'm here. Thank you. Thank you.
It's Tom there. Yes, sir, it's there. Oh, you have, are you? You have the floor, Prof. He has what? You have the floor. Oh, oh, I didn't, I didn't hear that. I'm sorry. Can you repeat what you said? Hello. Can you mute yourself? It's the time of unmute yourself. Okay, so you have, you have the floor. Daddy. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, I bring you, I bring you greetings from California, United States. Um, we had a very long day yesterday on that on Wednesday, and I didn't get back home from school until about. 10 p.m. So I had to wake up early this morning and did my usual exercise. You can see that I fell on my exercise clothes. Um, what Tom has said is true, uh, except that I want to make one correction. I'm not the first. I'm not the I'm first day of Unibend law, law, but I am a member, member of the founding class when the university took up in 1981. I became dean in 1987. That's just one correction I'd like to make. Um, It is, it is true, true that, that we, I think somebody's phone is bringing an echo. So somebody, whoever that person is, to make sure that the the line is not echoing. I don't know who that is. But whatever I'm saying, it's coming back to me. Yeah. Is it is it okay now? Hello. Is it better? Aha. All right. Thank you. That was from me. Uh, well, uh, let me let me acquaint you with the history of uh, of American Heritage University. In two thousand and oh my God, the is still there. Hello. Mm. The echo. The echo. For, for best results, let everybody put themselves on mute. I'm not, uh, I'm talking and it's coming back to me. I'm not comfortable with it. Yeah, apart mm -hmm. from the speaker, let every person go on mute. If I knew, if I knew this, I would have um, asked that we use our own platform in what, you know, in what we use in teaching. I would have had it set up from here and invite everyone. It would have been a clean and better way to talk. Okay. Hello. Can you hear me now? Yes, we are hearing you, sir. Okay. In 2000 and, uh, 2003, I took up the challenge after my uh, the time I taught at Trinity Law School, where I was a professor and started taking uh, certification courses in online teaching. 
and online training of trainers. There were very few universities that showed interest at the time, but we were part of the first generation of the universities that took up the challenge of teaching students online. So I joined and I took those certifications. So I went back to Nigeria and um, uh, uh, I met uh, and I discussed this setting up this university with um, um, President Babangida who at that time uh, had a university called Heritage University. So he invited me specifically, October, that was October, October, October 22nd. I was in his house with a few friends. And he said he had Heritage University in Nigeria and that it would be a very good idea if we collaborate. His late wife, of blessed memory, showed uh, interest. She told me about her school and where to put the students and all that. If we can get, if we can get it done in America, it would be the best thing. And the man, the man uh, uh, told me that uh, he would uh, fund it. So um, I gave him a copy of the California uh, document of uh, buying shares. In order to fund the school, you have to buy shares. You can be a controlling shareholder. So, and I showed him documents of, uh, copies of the application that I put in. So everything went well. And um, I didn't hear from him. Then in 2004, the school was already established as Heritage University. Then I started getting, uh, uh, people started insulting me on the internet, saying all kinds of things about my connection with um, Ibrahim Babangida. Then our board met, what well, I called for that meeting. Our board met to uh, change the name. Our board met to change the name from Heritage University to American Heritage University of Southern California. And then we have to go to the Secretary of State of uh, California to make those changes and so that I can reflect on our bylaws. Then in that same 2004, I had finished with the following online uh, trainers, e-college, Blackboard, learninghouse.com, PeopleSoft, and I was ready to go. Of all these um, companies, Learning House, provided us, provided our staff with the training they needed at the time. You know, online is not just the way it is now because I developed over the years. At that time, it was not. As you teach, uh, as teachers get trained, the students also get trained. That was what it was in the beginning. Things were really rough until my son, who, um, who is very skilled in computer information systems, in fact, he has all the degrees in it, collaborated with a classmate of his from South Africa, another classmate of his from India. So they put their heads together and set up an online campus. And we started to use it to teach. Our first um, um, graduate that was uh, in 2008, and I took the bar exam just in the law school and passed. Many of them passed. 
year after year, year after year, year after year. The Guardian carried the story <clears throat> January 5. Guardian of Niger Nigerian Guardian, they carried the story. Then in 2011, that was my first contact. Um, Okoje came to the US, yes. And um, somebody mentioned it to me. So I, I went to a meeting that was set up for him. He came to recruit Nigerian, qualified Nigerian graduates to come and teach. So we met for the first time and I told him that I had, I have a, a university, I was, that I've been granted a license to establish a university in the US. That license did not say online because um, people erroneously confuse it that a, a university is online. No, in the United States, a university is a university. Teaching online or open distance learning is a, a mode to communicate. So we, which we have developed to the point now where we are doing what we are doing now. What we are doing now wasn't, wasn't around at all at that time. There was no interaction. It was, um, you, you do so many things to get things, to get students to listen to you. So um, in 2011, I visited Nigeria and I visited Okoje's office. Okoje directed me to the gentleman that was in, uh, in charge of uh, 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 I think at that time it was cross border education. So uh, they told me that I, I must apply and have interaction with, uh, with the NUC officials, which I did. Um, from that 2011, 2012, 2013, 2014, it was all notable games. Then I I, I now said, okay, uh, I, uh, in 2013, they wrote me a letter saying that they have two schools. Uh, they want to use those two schools as pilots uh, uh, program to see if online will work in Nigeria. But I knew very well that that was not the intention. They just wanted to help me out. I kept on trying, using all my connections, getting people to talk to them. And it got to the point where I had another interaction for setting the approach of our campus at the university. I had to follow another uh, set of rules. I went through all of it. I couldn't get love in Abuja. Now, the bank that was supposed to fund it, Bank of America, stopped. They told me that they cannot wait and there's no, there's nothing coming from, uh, there's no concrete evidence from the National University Commission. So I took all that pain until 2017. I tried again. Uh, nothing happened until Okoji left. The, the present uh, NUCs. The Secretary Secretary came in and he was very friendly. And I explained that I, I, I took my file, all the communications that I had with Okoji with me, and the man was very receptive. But then told me that Nigeria has not developed well enough to teach online. Well, I said, well, somebody, somebody how to start it. We're already in it. And um, we, we, are, we are using, we are users. I can bring the technology to Nigeria. So uh, he told me uh, that uh, he will give me the support, all the support if I start a regular university. It was at that point I, just, I, started, I made up my mind to, to start to disengage and go to a neighboring country. In fact, there are, there are countries along the West African coast, then uh, uh, Togo, Cote d'Ivoire, 
even uh, Cameroon wanted us to come. But the benefit of, uh, if I just have uh, the benefit of uh, having a university in Nigeria uh, is that the students will have a competitive advantage of uh, having Americans teach them, not, uh, not fully, because the NEC said, uh, if they are taking one third of um, um, foreign teachers, uh, they, won't, they won't allow uh, a whole uh, uh, to, to staff the, the faculty with the Americans. That is one advantage. The second advantage is that foreign students, uh, because of our name, students will come in and pay and use dollars to pay depending on what management decides. But as I speak to you now, we have students in many parts of the world. And they, many of them cannot come to the US because of visa restrictions. So that's another advantage. They will come to Nigeria because uh, it's, it will be easier for them to get visas to come to Nigeria. Anyone coming from um, English speaking country can come to Nigeria. It's not as difficult as, as coming to the US. So that's another advantage. Now, if you were to take, oh, sorry, then we had uh, in 2018 and 19, I was in Nigeria. And I was always going to the NUC. My students are there. It's just that I was getting tired of it. 2019, I had decided to just uh, disengage and return uh, back to the United States. Uh, and, and that was in November 7, 2019, I returned. But before then, I met with Tom, and we had a very long discussion that was all that you said earlier. Yeah. Now, we are still, we are now at crossroads. Franchise, just like uh, 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 Atiku. Atiku franchised American University from Washington, D.C. I'm very aware of it. And I knew how much uh, he paid. The difference between Atiko and I is that Atiko did not establish any, any university. It was just paperwork. It's like you want to set up a petrol station from uh, from mobile. You the mobile give you a set of forms to fill and it do everything for you. You you franchise it and you run it, and they assist you to run it for some time, and you pay so much at the end of it. So that's kind that's the kind of picture. Um, the I have, there are so many advantages. So in April 2019, I'm just talking off my head. I didn't, I didn't have, I don't have any paper. So please excuse me if I'm going back and forth. We had a, um, we, we had a summit on private education in Niger, private university education in Nigeria at the NUC office. I attended, I was invited, and uh, all that I heard there was just uh, uh, that the, 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 there's a shift of individuals wanting to establish university. I mean, um, a shift from those, from serious individuals to ministers and those people that looted money. So when you have a situation like that, then it, it doesn't work out well because there's a spiritual aspect of education, which a lot of people don't know. There's a spiritual aspect. You don't just do it like that. There must be, there must be a committee of dedicated people who are interested in uh, educating our youth. That's, that's just the bottom line. Anyone who is not interested in educating our youth should not venture there. There are other things you can do. I start, I, I, I'm a lawyer, but I, I, I never practiced in court one day. I've, I, I've been, I've been a university man all along. University of, of uh, Benin in Nigeria, SS University in, in England, then Trinity Law School in, in, in California, America, and then American Heritage University. So you can see that all my life, all my life I've been a university man. In Nigeria, appointments of vice chancellors are political. Sometimes they put some idiots there. 
You know, uh, those, those positions are supposed to be earned. You earn it. If you want to be a president of, Amer uh, of a president in America, there, there are, you, you attend several conferences and workshops. And uh, in fact, I even heard that some universities are now offering a, a degree program in educational leadership and how to become a vice chancellor. You have to be trained. In Nigeria, they don't train anyone. They put you as head of department. I, I, I see some doctors here. Those of you are in education, you know what I'm talking about. You put somebody up as a principal, no training. Put somebody HOD, you know, chair, no training. <laughs> vice chancellor, no training. Vice chancellor, no training. So, so American model is fixed. And I understand it very well because I have run it now. We are in our 17th year. So not 17 days, not 17 months, 17 years uh, with uh, uh, few investors. I don't, I don't have the, the right kind of money I wanted. The school would have been so big. I don't have it. I've asked friends. I know friends in Nigeria who, who take their money and put them in, a, in, a, in vehicles and put them inside the bush. Some, some, some of them, they, they load them up and put them, uh, they build houses for money. They will not release it. So, so uh, at that uh, summit, I met the, well, the, the, the jam director was there. He was very friendly with me. And he told me that uh, to eventually get uh, even a temporary license, he gave us 500 students. I mean, through jam. So if you take 500 students at that time, as 2018, and um, if you take 500 students and put it at that time, nine, 995,000 naira. Uh, you know, I just I, I just put that in my head, or even 1.2 or 1.5 million per student. You, you can imagine how far we can go on that. That will enable us to students, which I know how to do, because I, I tried to help Okoje one time, because when he came, he didn't know how to do it. He didn't even know where to go. I know where those professors are. I know the hungry ones. I know those that are uh, uh, single parents that are uh, uh, adventurous like this. I know those that came from, from the war. America is, you know, have war. They are, they are going on uh, fighting different countries. I know, where, I know where to catch some of those people. I also know those who are even willing and ready to go. But, but so for somebody to come from Nigeria to do that, they cannot, it's very difficult. And then of, of course, you have those two that have negative impression about Nigeria. So when I recruit uh, faculty, I make sure I, I keep them well, keep them as friends hold the um, periodic meetings with them to tell them that Nigeria is not what you see on television or what people tell you. So um, that goes into so like having them come in on contracts and uh, one or two years or three years as the case may be. And then also create another pool, another pool of faculty. Um, and I pull a faculty and then um, in, uh, like if the if, it, if contract is, a, is, is expiring, we're able to uh, bring in new faculty immediately. And then of course, the, uh, the, the other side of it, which is the curriculum. What do you use in teaching students? How do you teach students? Um, I, 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 I use the American system for the close to 20 years I put in Uniben um, or in my teaching. And my students today still, uh, if you put them on my Facebook, I have over 5,000 of them as friends. They write to me, they, I always help them too. Some of them coming out here to do sabbatical. Some of them are professors. For those that are professors, I will, I'll stick at my neck to help them to get a sabbatical leave because the most universities don't like to bring in Nigerians. When they bring them, they become a problem. They don't want to go back. And uh, so um, it, uh, the, 
schools are already aware of that. But up till last year here, I was still able to bring in about seven of them who are in different universities. So um, the, the, the gain, the financial gain is there. The financial gain is there because we are already, uh, we already, we are already um, gotten to a point where we have name recognition. Nobody is saying American heritage anymore. We are looking what we want to expand we want to get more recognition, more recognition, but it costs money and nobody wants to invest. So uh, I want to use the opportunity to and uh, then uh, distinguish ladies and gentlemen in this forum that um, there's a lot to gain. I just gave an example of what the, I forgot his name now, of what the jam man told me that he would give us 500 students to start with. If we have 500 students from Nigeria and then bring students from neighboring countries because they will come to an American school, then a, um, a name that uh, doesn't uh, sell, uh, let me just to sh uh, share an experience I had. They, uh, we do respect to Christians here, but I, I have to say it because it was me that experienced it. Somebody invited me and said, look, prof, instead of going about looking for land, why don't you buy an existing unit in, uh, in Ogun State? So uh, then uh, what's the name of the university? It was a church uh, university with... Uh, a very awkward name, but it, the university was owned by Mountain Empire. So it was Mountain Top University. So when the lady came to me to explain, I said, look, first of all, Mountain Top, uh, that will not go well because they've already, felt, uh, and then brought pictures. I didn't quite like the kind of buildings they have because what we have in mind is using prefab and get these modern buildings uh, they are not as expensive as you think. So I so, said, well, first, first of all, I'm acquainted with the kind of uh, uh, buildings I saw and I asked how many students, when she told me I was also very disappointed, a university that had been on ground for more than five years should have more students. The reason being that parents will not want to send their children to that kind of a named school. The only students they have is they are church members. When, when you start bringing in your church members into an academic institution, you are destroying it. Uh, academic institution should be where you take the best and the brightest. Don't, don't bring in uh, people just because you know the best. You can help in another area of specialty, but don't, don't bring him or her into an institution where um, Things are done with rules. You know, we don't do, do we, we don't do things with rules in Nigeria. We do it upside down. So uh, that is just uh, a way to uh, going to uh, to conclude that I am um, I'm retiring. I changed my title. I'm, I'm chancellor and founder. Uh, Doctor Aitwa, Doctor Aitwa Ogiamie. Um, replace, it will, had already replaced me, he's the current president. Uh, we are seeking recognition from a Christian organization. Uh, that's where we were all, all day yesterday till late. And uh, so that we veer off from secular, um, secular recognition. We, we, not, we now want to be very specific. So, um, as matters currently stand, we need to uh, get going. We need to have a franchise uh, price and we need to, um, uh, there's really nothing to do because I've done everything uh, already. What we need now is money, big money, not small money, big, 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 big money. We need money. So you, Gentlemen, ladies, um, please go out there, get it, because the gain is there. The gain is there. We have a name that will bring attract students. As I speak to you now, in India alone, we have uh, we have uh, about uh, sixteen hundred students from India. You know, so um, uh, Macedonia, uh, 
Slovenia, Montenegro, all the former Balkan countries, Serbia, Novi Pazar, that former Balkan country. We have we were the first to penetrate the region, so we're very popular in Macedonia. When you land uh, Alexander uh, Alexander the Great Airport uh, and uh, and mention our school, people are aware. People know it. Uh, Malaysia, Philippines. Uh, that's where we have cross border education, where we grant, we validate the degrees. Um, you may ask, why would uh, students uh, have two degrees? Well, the world has changed, and some of these, um, in in some of these countries, um, they want American degrees, and, and students seeking second degrees uh, normally have a competitive advantage over those with single degrees. You know, the, the, the Gulf, where they hire people, once, uh, once you bring a degree from a name they are not very familiar with, then they, 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 they stop, they stop recruitment until they find something from America or from England. We have very many of our graduates working in the oil field, you know. So um, uh, I'm not saying, I'm not condemning Nigeria because I'm in Nigeria, just like you. You know, I understand uh, the place very well. It's my home uh, from a do state. Uh, my mother is from Mundo state. So two um, states like that. Um, I just happened to be lucky to be able to put this together. And I followed the rules and did what was necessary to uh, be able to establish this university. And our objective, what I did was to pay a consultant who did, uh, who, who searched on the internet uh, to find, uh, to get at a percentage to show that adult learners, adult learners who went to the university, but never completed their university education after two years are there. And I'm sure you, you are too, that you also have it in Nigeria. So the, uh, the scope of our license enabled us to take in, we don't necessarily go for uh, secondary school people. We go for mainly people who have spent two years and cannot, uh, are unable to finish for whatever reason. It could be somebody related to a uh, cult, it could be political engineer or something. We don't care about that because we just want to impact knowledge on these people because education is, no, we, is the provision of knowledge that coincides with truth. So that's our, that's our objective. Get those people who went to school and stopped after two years. Those are our candidates. So for Nigeria, I know that the emphasis is on JAM. Um, incidentally, uh, when, uh, I was in Nigeria, in, uh, we, uh, I was, uh, you know, every faculty have their own admissions officer. I was also admissions officer for uh, faculty of law for about um, six years at different times. So many of those people that have big names now, were my students that I recruited as students and, then, and I also taught them, you know. So mode of teaching, the Nigerian way, I we have to resolve that. I will fully, fully participate in the recruitment of uh, lecturers and professors. Uh, where I will bring in seasoned academics that will come in to uh, educate. But now, thank God we have Zoom. Some of these things cannot be done by Zoom on how to teach. I'm not saying that our professors don't know how to teach, but they, they are different kinds of, they are teaching the way they teach, which is the old English method, is different from, uh, from the American method. Very, very different. And uh, if I may just mention something here, we, we, we teach and quiz. We teach and quiz, teach and quiz, Newton, final. Teach and quiz, you see? Once you have that, this, every student will sit down they will sit down and do, and, and, and uh, instead of uh, copying notes, and you are memorizing notes. When students copy notes, 
I tell you, the, their retention, the retention capacity uh, of, of, of what they memorize start to diminish six weeks after they leave school or six weeks after they leave campus. It will just go away. So we, we teach, um, that's why our textbooks, our textbooks are like, they are like uh, um, 14 to 16 chapters. 15 to, 15 to 16 chapters represent uh, a, um, uh, um, a semester. 15 weeks make a semester. Under the Carnegie Endowment, 15, uh, 16, 15 weeks, one five. You see, if you take a course, a lot of people don't know that. When you say because economic 101, three, three credits or three units, they don't know what it means. It was developed in America. So when you sit in the class times uh, 15 weeks, then you have 45 weeks. I mean, you have 45 hours, three hours of, of a coursework times 15, you have 45 hours. Then that is, when, those, when the 45 hours is earned, they will say you have completed the semester. Then you go to um, summer. Some universities have summer. Same thing. Uh, said that you increase the, uh, the, you double up the number of uh, teaching hours. And then the fall semester, which normally starts in August, September, and thereabout. So that's how we are. So we're very different. And then our, our curriculum is, is clean. And even the syllabus, we, a, a, a professor cannot, or a lecturer cannot go into the lecture and just enter and start teaching like they do in many universities, even in Benin. When I was dean, I never allowed it. You bring, your syllabus, bring your syllabus to the faculty meeting and let's look at it together. Then the dean will approve before you can go and teach. We don't want you to go there and start picking uh, what you have. Some, some of them will go into, um, the student brochure and teach from and look at topics from there. No, ours is very scientific. You start from the course content. Everything is so, so so well organized. Talk about our grading policy, attendance policy, and and, and we host students. We, we, we have eighty to ninety percent attendance to write any exam. If you don't have the eighty to ninety percent, you can you cannot write the exam. And we hold on to that very strictly. And we are able to take care of fraud and cheating Even, uh, online. That was, I had a webinar with the Minister of, uh, the Minister, uh, Staff of Education some time ago. I, I, I was not very happy with them. And I told them that um, we, even when they asked that I come to Nigeria, I told them I'm not coming to Nigeria. I've, I've spent a lot, a lot of time in Nigeria already. Now they, are regret, now they are regretting it. National Open University is regretting. Because the National Open University System, if it's in, in the US, they won't, they won't accredit them because there's no interaction. You know, so um, uh, I, have, I think I've spoken at length. I've touched, if there's any area, please ask me so that we are on the same page. But uh, my desire is to um, uh, give up franchise of uh, the university and I will assist with my team to put it right and then disengage. So we'll talk about money. It's not just the name. Otherwise, uh, you, can, you can start the university and put uh, um, a name, a Nigerian name, and start the university there in Port Harcourt. It's allowed. But, but we have gone far. We just need um, to do a few things to get this license, and which can be obtained, because I have the people there now. I will, I will open up a few things. And then um, once we are able to get uh, through this pandemic uh, problem that we have, then, and also um, if I'm able to get uh, my shot, you know, my, you know, in California, we are required to do uh, two vaccinations, uh, with, uh, California, Colorado, and New York, I think, and, and Florida. Uh, a new a new version of uh, COVID-19 came, and then so we are required to uh, get our vaccinations uh, two week uh, two weeks apart from uh, the first vaccination. So I've not taken any, so I'm waiting for my turn. Uh, I'm not a young man. I'm in my seventies, 
But sometimes uh, people say, I act like a young man. I act like a young man because I'm around students all, all the time. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a student-centered person. I'm not, uh, they tried to drag me into politics uh, in 1999. It didn't work, so uh, I'm back to what I think I understand best. Uh, there's no other university in Nigeria that is owned by any African, none. You know, this is, you know, the computer is there, you can't lie. No, no. I'm the first Nigerian to be granted a license to establish a university in the United States. So it will be my pleasure to work with you guys, but you have to, you have to do a lot of foot running. <laughs> Go and get the money, you know. Naira and dollars, they have their different uh, place in history. Uh, the so-called dollar there is, oh, that would be how much, so much in dollars. It's not much because the way you spend Naira is the way we spend dollars here. Yeah. You know, so money goes uh, very fast. Uh, having said that, I'd like to end my familiarization discussion. I didn't prepare. I just talked. I wanted, I wanted to talk casually so that uh, you guys can understand me. If there are questions, I'm available. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, uh, uh, distinguished uh, uh, Kuruma, who is also part of our planning committee members. Miyabio, the floor is yours. It's echoing. Some, somebody, somebody, somebody is uh, there. Have to unmute. Okay. Um, thank you. Oh, you, uh, uh, you have to. Uh, Okay, thank you, Professor. Um, um, I think listening to you very keenly and quietly, um, I, I see a lot of, um, I mean, I, I watch beyond the words and I see a lot of maturity. I see a lot of experience and I see a lot of knocks you've gone through the usual knocks in Nigeria and to hold a vision that um, you have held from 2014 to this day, it shows um, some level of tenacity uh, and not just tenacity, principles tenacity, because when you raise the issues of um, not wanting to take your ideas into certain territories, you come out with clarity. Um, you don't want politicians to invest um, who are hiding money somewhere. You had to get your board to change your na the name of your university from Heritage University to American Heritage University because of the brand erosion that uh, are likely because of the relationship with um, Buhari and so on. And all that, I think, um, uh, mm -hmm. And then, of course, I'm, I'm, I'm in the United States of America. I've been uh, a student here for, in the university, so I understand the American uh, pedago uh, pedagogy, the, the administrative systems, specialized administrative systems as different from faculty. They are very different things, and uh, um, the systems that they use to manage education online and all that, all that are there because I'm currently a student and I've also been a fellow. So I share some of the sentiments you have raised. Um, funding is going to be a challenge, uh, but it's not also um, doable, undoable. It's not something that cannot be achieved given the principles that you are approaching. Uh, because I mean, the people that have money in Nigeria are largely fraudsters. You don't find either they are fraudsters from politics or they are fraudsters from from banks who have uh, looted um, bank monies and so on. So if you look at that, there are the people that set up university. The only people that probably um, um, you may look at are the more liberal uh, church people, but those liberal church people, whether it is a Catholic church or something, are also tied to their church identity. So um, you usually find um, challenges with um, 
them not wanting to lose their identity and focus on the goal of education. That is why perhaps some of them have not um, opened up to prosper uh, by allowing certain other things. If not, they have a name, they have some level of reputation that they can draw on, but they don't usually want to give their identity up and remain in their closed identity. But you mentioned something that is of interest to me, and, and that's perhaps where I would like to uh, get confidence before I, I, I probably make some other suggestion moving forward. What you've mentioned was that you are beginning to also think about desecularizing your distance, and that's where you were yesterday, like you said. Can you give us more light? What, what is the scope of desecularization and seeking to be um, recognized within the sphere of a faith-based um, 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 uh, branding of the university? Uh, because I mean, there are a lot of liberal faith-based organizations that may want to show interest in what you're doing. That's what I thought I should ask as my first uh, point after the background. Thank you, Prof. Okay. okay, I appreciate that. I, I, that you are, you are currently studying here really um, uh, uh, was good to hear. And I can tell from how you speak and your language, uh, I can tell. Well, we, well, we, the way things are, we started as a for-profit institution, academic institution, for-profit. What that meant is we pay more tax. That's why I'm not rich. I pay tax. We do it. We pay tax for everything we do. American business, you know, it. I don't know what cost of study you have, but you pay a lot of tax if you have for profit. So we decided to change and to non-profit. Uh, the, the few investors I have agreed because they know how much tax we have paid over the years. I share this with you. I brought in a Nigerian accountant who is a rich channel accountant. And he didn't have the time to understand how the, uh, the way the tax system is in America. So uh, in America, when, when we pay salaries, you, pay, you, pay, uh, you make deductions. I'm sure you're aware of that. Deductions are made at, from salary for your for social security, for medical insurance, life you, what have you, city, uh, city, uh, insurance, uh, levies, and all that. All these deductions have been made, and they want to for uh, mm -hmm. unemployment, unemployment insurance. Those deductions have to be made. And when you are unemployed, we partake in the payment of that individual until he finds another job. So this guy will just pay salaries. And I didn't know for a very long time. He would just pay salaries without deductions. The one that was the uh, he thought that was so bad on us was uh, was in the Taran uh, uh, the IRS, Internal Revenue Service. The IRS, I think you have one in Nigeria now, so something like that. Um, tax was so high, and they have a way of computing it by uh, taxing you, I mean, by uh, mm -hmm. For the unpaid balance to be good. So by the time we added it, we owe the IRS $230,000. You know, that's what we brought in Nigeria. That was the end of it. That was the end. There was no more. And I, I brought, if you look at the names on the website, there are three. We go, yeah, yes, that's my family. So I brought my family. They're all highly educated. I brought them in. It's okay. That's cool. Do the job and then they do it right. Um, that's as far as that is concerned. We are, we are branching off to faith based. In fact, mm -hmm. so the next one we can show you, we visit our website is going to be faith based because that's where the world is uh, returning. This open, uh, this is not helping us at all. We when uh, the idea came from the fact that I taught at Trinity Law School. Which is, uh, which is a faith-based law school. Uh, and um, so 
some of the things I learned from that actually also reform my behavior. Because uh, the way human beings are today, we need, we need certain things to put in their reckless actions. People are, people are not behaving well anymore. When I see things coming from Nigeria, sometimes I just cry. You know, things were not like that when I was coming up. Where, uh, where, where I just mm-hmm. had to do my leadership and people that are not willing to uh, support our people. Believe how the so called leaders are not willing to support our people. So it is the same thing everywhere. Look at what Trump did. That's a man that's totally, completely out of order. So uh, we uh, are something that's known as going through faith based, where uh, we, we pray. In our trade gospel, we we'll pray before class and after class. That has a way of keeping people up to be kind of straight jacketed. You don't, you know, behave anyhow. You don't have to. Thank you, sir. Hello. So now I'm not done. I'm not done. Um, so um, you will see our faith statements because we want to go that way. Because the world is changing and we are falling up with changing times. Thank you. Okay. Um, the second question is um, I'm, I'm looking at um, now because I, I get I get the sense that you're clearly trying to um, pursue a moral rearmament of society through education as a, a key, as a as a new component to your own yes as a new component to your own pursuit. And it will appear that um, in Nigeria, are you willing to look at partnering with financial institutions or sort of consultants who are able to secure private placements? For instance, you have your business plan and uh, you take it around, you you raise um, um, uh, equities and then call for, get financial partners who know where the money is maybe a, a, a consultant in a bank or a bank's um, um, mm-hmm. financial arm, not the banking sector, but they have a lot of all these uh, um, equity arms and so on, which go about looking for private placement. Do you have this, the, um, the thinking that you want to like um, create an investment bank, uh, uh, proposal and uh, partner with them to go and look for private placements with uh, some of these people that have money based on a solid business mm-hmm. plan. I mean, if that is there, then we can begin to say, okay, we can uh, begin. To- are you talking about Nigeria or the US? No, Nigeria, Nigeria. Oh, good, 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 good. Well, that's what I did throughout the uh, through, um, uh, 2011 to um, 2019. That's all I did. I have different versions of, uh, of all that you said. If okay. I still in class, when I go to the internet, to somebody say, we want to see your financial, whatever, I want to see your proposal, I want to see uh, your, like all this uh, uh, placement uh, documents and all that. We have different kinds. I got tired of it because they were not yielding the desired results. No. Nobody. Some will say yes. Uh, like I went to General Guzong, somebody took me to him, said yes, but when I got there, it was a, well, I got a Muslim, so that didn't go that far. Yeah. And uh, uh, all I'm looking for, right? Uh, if, like I will say, because in California, let me let me disclose this to you. Uh, in California, we have selling investors. Some, some of them say they don't know how to send it, but that's okay. I will, will prepare an agreement, and then that agreement will qualify you as a silent investor. A Confidentiality silent investor. arrangements, yeah. Huh? Confidentiality arrangements, yeah. Um, uh, I know in, in California, we call it a silent. Okay. So it's not disclosed to any, anybody, not even any, anywhere to anyone. You remain at the background. I even try to say, well, I would support. And you, you, said it, you I don't say it's anybody to us, but if you, in California, we have to issue a certificate, which is of 
shares. We don't, you don't do shares and write. We don't write anything. They are pro forma documents that had to be signed. And, uh, and, and then the number of the, the shareholder amount is stated and all that everything is done properly. Um, they will say yes and they turn around and say no. But my interest now, if you understand very well, is for some for somebody a group of people to so I don't want to run around. I'm just tired of it. Um uh, uh, I, don't, I just want people to take it over in form of a franchise, just like what they did to Atiku. Okay. And, and then, and then we will provide all the technical, every all that I said. Okay, so you just want to be a technical partner to a core investor who does all that he, that needs to be done in Nigeria, so long as he meets the technical standards and right. And, and use our name, use our name brand, yeah. and, and okay. do, do it. Then I will okay. now provide all that. I will provide all that. Okay, I get you. I get I get I get your concept better now. <laughs> Thank you. Mm. Um, are you in the financial world or you are what are you studying? No, I I am an all weather. <laughs> I'm, I do a lot of business, so yes, and then uh, from the way you you have the language, you have the language and you have the expert knowledge to use it, get this thing going because there's money to be made. No, in Nigeria there is. In Nigeria, in Nigeria there is because the the international the access to um, foreign schools is uh, the windows are closing. Oh with, yes. With the high rate of um, uh, the dollar, the dollar to the naira and so on, yeah. the windows to go abroad are closing. So if people have the the the, the quality a short quality of education. At a good price, you will be right. able to people run in that direction. So that is not really a problem. It is. It is like I said. Um, I am not qualified to look for private equity, but I know that there are people in banks and uh, investment uh, companies and so on who have the capacity. They know where the money is. Not you going to do it as an individual. They know where the money is. They know who owns the money because they are keeping people's money quietly in some way. And uh, if they have a very good proposal, they can they can uh, take a, a, a deal, cut a deal with you and say, okay, let them go and uh, do the private placements and bring where all the money is where they are. So long as they see a very good business plan. And uh, 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 people can, governments can even immediately guarantee, depending on where you locate the school and how it works for them, Governments can immediately guarantee students. In terms on, of, on, the yeah. government of Ondo was going to do that. Yeah. But they are still, uh, I, I gave my, uh, my word to Tom. I said, let's start for that. Um, the, 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 my interest in Port Harcourt is this. Um, that's one state in Nigeria where um, everyone uh, communicates w uh, better than other states. Um, what do I mean? Uh, foreigners coming to Port Harcourt will not have problem communicating with uh, uh, people in Port Harcourt. Yeah, yes. Cosmopolitan. Yes. Uh, so Port Harcourt is good. And then the rivers uh, will attract uh, very many Americans. And uh, the airport is there. So Port Harcourt sounds much better than uh, Ore, for example, because the, the closest airport to our is from Benin, you know, yeah. and uh, I was considering all that. And then the one in uh, Aqua Ibom, uh, too, uh, even though that's uh, about the same thing, but at least uh, Port Harcourt is, um, have an international airport where we can fly directly uh, and, uh, to Port Harcourt and then uh, move on from there with uh, And there are a lot of, I don't know what you, what you have dealt with in terms of infrastructure. All said, uh, uh, all said, uh, my sweat equity remains. So yeah, of course, somebody, of course. <laughs> somebody have to sit down. Yeah, somebody have to sit down to design this and give it to uh, you guys. Oh. Uh, you, you have the language. You you, sh you should vote with other people. There, I see some big names. There, I see doctors, and uh, I saw a particular uh, lady and another guy. Um, uh, you guys should be able to see that. Yeah, yeah. What what mm -hmm. I did here was 
We'll do that. <laughs> we'll do that. Hello. Hello. Yes, we'll do that. We're hearing, sir. Okay. So uh, well, are you? Yes, yeah, so the gentleman I spoke with, that was very good. I appreciate you. Is there mm -hmm. any other question from anybody? Please ask me. Don't ask Tom. Ask me. I'm here now. Okay. Yeah, I have I have a question, sir. This is Z Nightberry from Minnesota. Oh, okay. Um, I want to piggy bank on what the last uh, person that asked you a question just mentioned. Um, yeah. I but our opinions are, are differs in some ways. I know that um, there are legitimate wealthy people in Nigeria yes. that can fund this organization successfully. Yes. Um, but for everything, for somebody to buy, they buy out of um, mm -hmm. emotion or fear. Those are the two key things that make people buy. <laughs> so for people to buy into this um, idea of this university, um, we should present something that is going to be cashy to them. A good example is what the last person said, that um, uh, the foreign schools uh, are beginning to be limited or reduced in Nigeria. Now, this is a foreign school. My question is, the certification from this university, will it be accepted in UK and in the US? If somebody have a first degree there, will the US and UK system accept it? Because Good question. I've seen people having challenges Good with question. their communication from Africa. Good question. You are go the name is not American Heritage University of Southern California. You forget, right, on the, on the California side, it's not what we are talking about. We are talking is the name brand, American Heritage mm -hmm. University of Nigeria, Port Harcourt. Mm -hmm. You know, once the NUC grants a license, it stands to be accepted anywhere in the world, anywhere. Anywhere in the world, anywhere in the world, because it's only it is only in America that uh, we start universities are established by state and they go national. Uh, in Nigeria, it's only uh, you start the university, you go straight to the National Universities Commission, Nigerian University Commission. You know, so they they are charged with the responsibility of accrediting schools. So if you were with us, when I was uh, discussing. I mentioned everything from 2011 to now. I lost hope, but I'm I'm proud that uh, I it happened that way. But you see, then when the COVID-19 came, they were calling me. I said, you can't call me because we already established our school is functioning. We have a law school. That shows the legitimacy of what we are doing. American Heritage University School of Law. You know, we have a law school. And we are 17 years old. You know, when they started National Open University, they, did, they couldn't graduate students until about uh, eight or nine years uh, after, uh, after approval because they were having problems with um, personnel. They put older uh, 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 academic people that know nothing to computer and put them in place. Then they bring the younger ones that are very sharp and bring them down which is very typical of our people. That's why National Open University could not, they, they don't see beyond what they are doing. They don't know that you, you, the time changes everything. You must change. If you don't change, then the, the, the change will change you. Or the, you know, so they don't, they, they don't believe in any state of the art of anything. How can you go and register and carry papers home and then, you are, then they start sending you materials in the mail or something? That's not uh, how to go to school. So I've answered your question. In, uh, American Heritage University in Nigeria will be accredited by the National Investors Commission and the graduates can go anywhere. But you know, I tell you something though. We, 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 no, longer, we no longer even hire Nigerians, except those that are born here. For example, uh, I, I, I tried to employ two professors from Nigeria and I regretted it law professors, and I will never, ever do it again. I left, they say, they say a policy not to allow uh, Nigerian professors to come. When, when you tell them, go and do, read these things, you learn how to teach online, they've never done it before. 
It is only now that there is Zoom, which is comparatively recently, uh, maybe a few months back because of pandemic. Before then, uh, there was no way. So I don't see any Nigerian going to like UK to go and look for a job. How? People, people like to employ, they want to employ those who understand the streets where you are, who understand the language. You know, there's the language factor too. Uh, but where you are taught by Americans and you interact with Americans, there's, you know, there's chances are that you pick up some of these things rather than pick it up on the street. So um, to that extent, I think I've answered your question. Thank you very much. All right. If you are in the twin, if you are in the twin cities, my brother is an accountant there in Minnesota. What is, what is there's, a, there's a place the wife sells African food, and he does his accounting with something upstairs. His name is Jonah Ogiami. Ogiami, I know him. You it's know him? A, yeah. Uh, it must be the Jonah in Edo Edo Association. <laughs> So I I know I know most of them through um, Nido, so we can talk about okay, that. Nido, Let me, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, you are in Nido. One time, yeah, I wrote to uh, because David, she didn't even respond to my mail. Oh, she, oh, she, oh she, 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 that, that one is a, it's a different time discussion. It's a long story. But okay. It, it, glad, I'm I'm very glad to meet you and uh, know you through this. So we'll talk more. No, now that. You, now that you know my brother, we are, we are at home with me. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you very much, sir. Do you see, do you see why you cannot lie? Okay. Because well, uh -huh. you cannot lie. I, my name is... Uh, <laughs> no, no, if you come across this name, Ogiamia, it's a rare name in Benin. Nobody mm -hmm. bears our name unless, unless my family members. And right now we are at war with the other of Benin. Wow. Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we didn't want to uh, make this a personal thing, but it's all part of uh, interaction that we get from online systems. Sometimes you have to digress to move on, otherwise it's very boring to start to say the same thing over and over again. Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay. We have mm -hmm. a question from uh, Taufiki Odunawo. He's also a oh, member yes. of the yes, I saw the name. board. Uh, yes. He yes. A yes. He was. Uh, he was one of the early um, uh, guys yeah. I got in. Yeah. I, I saw him yeah. Because I logged in at. Yes. Yeah. I logged in at uh, five minutes after. Yes. Yes. Good day, Prof. And thank yeah. you for the insights into the journey you have taken so far on this yeah. uh, laudable and. Uh, uh, let me say something that um, from generation to generation. Yes. Your name will continue to be on. It's, it's also exciting that another set of generation can take on journey because it's a journey. It's sure. something that uh, in 100 years' time, in 100 years' time, a lot of people will still talk about it. Oh, yeah. So Definitely. my I, once, one, one, one striking thing from your early uh, um, speech was the, when you mentioned the, the Heritage University license that was held by uh, former President uh, Babangida. So yes. how you were able to also navigate out of that to... Yes. to Rebrand the to rebrand and then the the projects. So I want to yes. ask again whether there's still any relationship. Is there still any relationship, or have you no. totally closed that um, uh, option? I, I appreciate the question. We don't have any relationship, but uh, what I owe him is uh, greetings uh, uh, on his birthday. I don't have any. The, okay, let me let me let me put it to the right perspective. After he promised he was going to fund it, and we were looking forward to money from him, we led by uh, not not individual account, university account, nothing came in. Then when Guardian published 
our approval that we have been granted a license, he now called me and left three numbers, one in his house, uh, one, then the, the one when it's in the mosque. Yeah, there was, I remember that there were three numbers. I just refused to go further because there was no need uh, because I was, we were already disappointed and I didn't see how he wants to come in again because we already settled and the school was fun functioning. Okay. See, the online system does not require a campus. Uh, it requires an administrative building where you have um, staff, uh, teaching and non-teaching staff. Students are at home, faculty people are at home. The only people that come to the office are the deans. So um, professors, they come in. Uh, uh, so it doesn't require an elaborate uh, uh, project like uh, campus. So, mm -hmm. um, so, there, so we didn't need that anymore. And I didn't want to suffer the second time because people told me that this man will disappoint you. So rather than respond, I don't, after that, but every August, so he's, he doesn't feel good about it, but he doesn't know how to open up the discussion. Every August 27th, I call him and wish him well. I have been doing that consistently since 2004. Even this last one, uh, he's, um, he said, uh, hey, uh, you know, he understands my voice. Uh, when I just call, he'll just know, okay, he hasn't come down yet. Can you call back in uh, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, one hour as the case may be? So we remain the way we are. Because it wasn't just that we, we had a long chat. Oh, then he, we, we had a very long discussion and he, he, he got to like me, but he never gave us any money. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, sir. I uh, because there's a there's a reason why I I, I asked that question because um, um I think uh, outside this uh, because it's something a little bit confidential. Maybe outside yeah. this meeting, I can still uh, reach out to you through some so that um there are still some other possibilities and from that angle. Sure, sure. You are welcome. You are welcome. You are welcome. I, I appreciate that. Or do you know what you are from okay, uh, Ogun you. State? Ogun State, you are correct. <laughs> Ijabu, yes, precisely. No, no, no. Oh, yes. <laughs> Ijabu, Ogunawa. they precisely. <laughs> yes, yes, so I know you know what. <laughs> okay. So it, it's, it's, it's interesting too. Your mom is Ondo, you are yeah, Do, so it's a, pro, it's a village, very good from, blend. From yes. the same village with Akei Dolu. Okay. Hello. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you so much, sir. I no, no appreciate problem. it, and uh, uh, we, are, we, are we look forward to taking this to the next level. We need to take this to the next level. I appreciate. I appreciate you very much. Thank you, Mr. Taufiki. Thank you very much. Okay, we are on the final uh, lap. The mileage so far, which I've already given, uh, mentioned one or two aspects of it. And um, yes. we, so we, are, we are ready, but I've been praying for this meeting. This meeting should have taken place since some months back, but because of these different issues that came up, but as we, we thank God, yes. finally took place. Sir. We are very grateful for your audience, sir. I think um, uh, we are on a no yes, uh, response by the president and some members of the advisory board. If you are sure, I'm, I'm, board, I'm still here, I'm available. Yes, yes, and you can dictate, so you can speak. Any response from the members of the advisory board? OK. The floor is open, you can speak. What about Dr. Comfort? 
Okay, she's here too. She's here, but she was having network issue. But I think she's she's here. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay, let me also use this opportunity to introduce our members, both the advisory board and the. Is that Mrs. Comfort, Dr. Comfort? Yes. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, Prof. Yes, thank you. Yeah, I'm to appreciate that the program so far to where we are today. And um, I want to say I'm strengthened. I want to encourage him and each and every one of us to appreciate all the input he has made to make sure that this is established. I think it's a, tree, it's a dream come true. I'm seeing it coming true. I'm seeing it coming true. And I, I, I know that so long as you were not discouraged from the start, it is not now. With all of us, I know we are going to come out strong. Thank you so much, Prof. Okay. Thank you. And God All bless right. you. All right. Good to hear from you. Thank you. What about Mrs. Saladapo? Okay, she didn't come in. She said her phone was having issues. Uh, she couldn't okay. come in. She sent her apologies. Okay. Uh, yes, sir. All right. So on that note, I, I would want to just, even though some of us are not com yet complete, I would just read out the names of those in the planning committee and those in the advisory yes. board. Uh, that's like a roll call, yes. so you have an, yes. Uh, first yes, of all, the planning I, I would like to part. have, no, when you are done, I would like to have their names uh, sent to yes. uh, directly to us. I will do that, sir. Yes. I will do that, sir. I'm from, yes. I'm from now on, my email is chancellor at ahusc.net, not president. Okay, okay sir, okay, sir. Uh, chancellor at ahusc.net. Okay, I'll make so it up. Send me the list. The list of all uh, members and their uh, portfolios, and their, so that uh, we'll start to uh, build uh, trust. Yes. Yes. Then uh, uh, on on the planning committee, we have uh, Asha BB Benson, the secretary of this committee. Is she there? She's here. She's here. <laughs> she's she didn't here. say anything. Uh, she she will give she will give the vote of thanks. Okay. Uh, then we have uh, Ambassador Elder Ambassador Nelson Ibibo. Yes. We, yes. we have uh, Architect Onare Sukariare. Yes. We have Barrister Goma Owochuku, a lady lawyer. Okay, okay that's, have, uh, that's, uh, um, uh, okay, that's good to know. Yes, sir. we have uh, Charles Genoari. Okay. Was a council member. We have Dr. Chukuma, the man that has the 1,000 plus at behind the airport, which one oh, is wonderful. that? Wonderful, yeah. wonderful, yes, wonderful. Yes. Also, we have Dr. Gideon Wankidu. Okay. We have Dr. Mrs. Comfort Ogochuba that just spoke just now. We have okay. A.B. Aya. Okay. An engineer, we have to mm -hmm. meet you in sure. Abuja. Yeah, if you, if you have then we have a break. He facilitated the as if we want to have the plan, Campus B. He did that for us in summer. We Wonderful. have Babs Abi Esuku. Then we have uh, Tony Atondi Kiare. These yes. are members of the planning committee. Then okay. under the, yeah, we have a Mia Bia Kuromia. The the first man that asked the question is, it was schooled in UST, then it's in the, in the US doing some other courses and doing some other courses and over and over again and adding to knowledge. Yes. He was one of the former IYC presidents. Yes. Then we have engineer Isaac. T. It's also in America too. We too. He said he has this Zeus Zoom platform, which we are using for this meeting. 
Oh, oh that's, that's good. good. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank, Thank you very much. No problem, bro. Yes, sir. Then we have uh, uh, it's a, it's a particular engineer. Uh, the, uh, under the under the um, committee, the board of advisors, we yes. have an Alaji Ibrahim, but he's not here with us right now. Okay. We have an uh, ambassador, God knows, Poladi Igali. Oh yes. In Abuja. Oh yes. Yes, uh, yes. Uh, we okay. have uh, architect Dan Sukari. I spoke with you. In, we met in Abuja too. Yes. Uh, MD of NNPC Housing. So when it comes to the planning aspect, he said it's going to play a very strong role too. Okay. And we have uh, okay, Barista Ilu Ozekome. Is it there? No, he, he, we spoke. He's, he's in a meeting in uh, local content. Say so he couldn't oh, meet yeah. up, but we spoke, we spoke this yeah. morning. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. To, uh, to Mike. Yes, Mike yes. Zuckerman. Then we have Mr. Edward Mark, he's in the Board of Internal Revenue in River State, but he didn't attend to this meeting because he's in the Board of Advisors. We have okay. Dr. Ayanata Ifdem. It's in London. It's a medical doctor in London, in UK there. OK. okay. Then we have Dr. Gideon Wankudu, in the Board of Advisors, Dr. Mrs. Comfort Ugosheba, Board of Advisors. Okay. We have Mr. Emeka Enyadike. It's a okay. sports group. It's, a sport. it's in the meeting with us here. He's listening very attentively. It's a yes. sport, international sports guru from Nigeria. Well, wow. based in South Africa. Uh, yeah. It's also, yeah, it's, it's yeah. listening to us. Yeah. We have uh, his name is uh, Emeka Enyadike from Omo. Yes. Okay. We have uh, Emeka Okwara. Okay. Emeka Okwara is the Vice President Corporate Affairs of Airtel. Oh, interesting. Yes, he popped in and he popped out. He said okay. he's full the member of the Board of Advisors. So he's going to be behind us once mm -hmm. we start. I'm sure everybody was waiting for this uh, meeting to take place first. We have yeah. um, Ada, 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 Imef, Ifiema, Apiafi, one of the okay. members of the Board of Advisors. Okay. We have Z Nagberi, I spoke to you just now in, uh, America, in the USA. Okay. Then we have Dr. Mark Fasten Granville. <laughs> Okay. Oh, yes, Dr. Martin Granville. Yes, from River State. Yes, yes. It's, um, our, it's, yes. it's our man. Yes, he flew into California to get the a honorary doctorate degree. Yes, we honored him. So, we yes, honored so him. He got yes. the first pilot doctorate degree uh, degree hold from this our Group. our zone. He's also yes. a member of the board of uh, advisors. So he said. Yeah, he has even agreed to handle anything design work for the project once we start. Wonderful. Then we have um, Elder Monde Wehere, as also a member of the Board of Advisors. He's not there now at the meeting? Uh, but he said he, he couldn't log in. He's in a meeting now somewhere else. Okay. Then okay. we have Professor Ungbo Waji Nte. OK, Nte. Uh, he's also yes. one of the Board of Advisors. We have uh, Professor Simeon Chituru Achinewu, a former yes, vice, vice Chancellor of yes, uh, UN City. Yeah, he's my, he's my man. Yeah. He says it's he says, uh, mm -hmm. uh, social mm -hmm. with us too. Mm -hmm. Then we have uh, Engineer Tawafiki Odunawo. Oh, yes. Uh, it's, it's, so Tawafiki Odunawo is an unassuming guy, but it's a very Big oil guru. In <laughs> <laughs> I think yeah, we have. Uh, I think I know Suba the family. Yes, uh, we have Suba Ayo Aladapo. Okay. Yes, uh, you spoke with that too. Yeah. So that's what well, we have for now. Sir. Well, I I want to really thank everyone for taking the opportunity to be at this meeting, and uh, this is just familiarization meeting to uh, know ourselves, to know where we are going, and then to actually 
uh, request that you uh, help, help in the assessment. I hope we get the university to start off in Nigeria. Um, what is going to happen is a visit. Once everything settles, we are going to come. I'm going to bring my cross border education director to accompany me. To, uh, to he's been to Nigeria before. He's been to. And I, uh, he's been to. So this is where I think I want to draw the curtain. Accept your questions. Um, it's, a, it's a work day. It's a, right now. It's a, about 14 minutes after 10 in the morning. So, so uh, thank you, thank you. So, vote of thanks by uh, Asha BB Benson and closing prayer. Okay. Asha, the floor is open. We can hear you. Asha, we can hear you. Check your, your headphone. You can hear me. Yeah, yeah, I can hear you now. Okay. okay. I first of all want to apologize for coming in late. I had to drag myself out of another meeting. So I thank you very much, Prof, for coming or for being here. Like the director said, we've been trying to meet with you since uh, last year. That's over a year now. And uh, we're finally uh, happy to have this meeting today. I'd also like to say uh, congratulations for being the first Nigerian to be certified uh, to own a university in the US. Congratulations indeed. Worry not they carry last, or maybe Nigeria know they carry last. So um, having listened to everything you had to say, uh, I am happy, I'm looking forward to a new era in education in Nigeria because the system here has really disappointed and failed all of us. There is nothing to write home about uh, in our education system. And it looks like the government is not even interested in the education system. So that is a problem. Now, if we have um, an institution where there is a system established and there is a principle that is gone by, Yes. that we follow. That is yes. a really good idea. It's a really good thing. Let there yes. be a paradigm shift. Let there be a new standard set. Let us yes. begin to have um, the intelligence of our children put forward yes. because we do have intelligent children. But fortunately, we have a road system where everything about them is dwarfed. Their skills yes. are dwarfed, their intelligence, their expression, their creativity, everything is dwarfed because there is a system where you just have to key into and be what they want you to be. So at the end of the day, um, you have a certificate that you, you don't even know what it's about. You don't know what the certificate is about. You are, you are a different person than what your certificate is saying. So I'm really happy about this. And um, I'm sure that everybody on this, on, on in this meeting is having the same, um, the same feeling as I have. You can hear it from the questions they have asked. You can hear it from the uh, words they have spoken. So we really appreciate um, this opportunity. At least we'll be able to turn the right side up because what we're operating in Nigeria is upside down system, just like yeah. you observed. So we're really grateful. We're looking forward to all this working out. And at the end of the day, we'll have a name that somebody will come out of Nigeria with a certificate and that person will be honored in any part of the world. Anywhere that the has world. been a problem. That has really been a problem before now. If I you can imagine a situation where a certificate from Ghana takes precedence over a certificate from Nigeria. And my opinion is that Nigerians are very intelligent people. So I don't know why that should be the case. So I, I want to thank you so profoundly. I appreciate you. I appreciate the fact that you're making yourself available for us anytime uh, we can reach out to you. And uh, we're looking forward to everything being put, put on the speed lane, but that doesn't mean we're going to water the quality. We're still going to maintain the quality. I appreciate the director. He's yeah. been putting so much energy. Uh, oh, Tom yeah. has really, really worked hard. He has been working. Oh, yeah. Sometimes it's so difficult to, <laughs> to get a hold of him. He has been working. I appreciate oh, you, uh, Isaac T, for making uh, this platform available. I appreciate yeah. everybody who has been here. And yeah. um, 
it's it's been a pleasure i look forward to even more meetings after now okay. but i'm okay. also looking forward to actions i i i'm tired of what we do over here unfortunately that's what we do uh, isaac t and the rest of you over there you don't understand what we go through we just do a lot of talk 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 and nothing happens but i want to believe that this is going to be different that we're going to have action plans that are going to be executable and we're going to execute them we're looking forward to that i also want to believe that we're not going to take a long time before we have another getting together for as many as have not been able to attend to this meeting, I'm sure they will come in with their ideas and with their suggestions, and we're going to forge ahead. And we're going to take the world of education in Nigeria by storm. That is what I am looking forward to. I am really looking forward to that. I just had um, my former GM uh, at the radio station where I worked just sent me uh, something, and we're talking about women who have um, who are now in leadership. You find that there are so many prime ministers and presidents who are women. And um, he was saying, but one of them is not actually supposed to be in that queue. I said, yes, but my concern is the fact that there is a paradigm shift in the world, which we have not embraced in Nigeria. We have to stop the kind of education we're giving to our girl children. We have to stop the kind of education we're giving to our children generally. We have to have parents who have something to give to their children. And when they come out, they can take their place in any part of the world. They can have their, their stand in any parts of the world. That's what I'm looking forward to. So I'm really happy to be on this board. I want to thank Honorable Tom as well for bringing me in on this. I'm really happy about it. So thank you everyone for coming. Thank you for the time and it's time well spent, believe me. I came in almost one hour late, but I believe, um, I know that I've enjoyed myself. I, I like what I've heard so far and I look forward to even more meetings. So thank you very much everyone for being on in this meeting. I look forward to meeting you some other time. And I look forward to meeting you all physically as well. Uh, Professor Gemma, we're expecting you in Portaco, just like you said. We're expecting to see you. And I know that it's going to be, like somebody said, that hundreds of years from now, if Christ tarries, we're going to be talking about this. I look forward to people talking about this and using it as a yardstick for what education should be. So thank you very much for coming. God bless you all. I'm also mandated to take the closing prayers. I believe I can do that now. Shall we pray? Father, we thank and bless your holy name. We thank you for this meeting, for this fellowship. We thank you for the way it has gone. We can see that it's you all the way. Lord, we believe that you will take us to a very fruitful end where generations unborn will benefit from it. Just like your, your servant has said, Professor Gami has said, he's taking it a little away from the secular. And I believe that there is a reason because morality has really gone down in our society. But we believe there's an opportunity for something new to to happen. We believe that this is an opportunity for there to be a change that is worth talking about. Thank you, Father, that even when we're going to meet again, you're going to make it possible. For those who are not able to attend, you're going to make it possible for them to attend, and we will come up again with even something more fruitful. We'll be counting yardsticks, we'll be counting achievements by the time we meet again. And this is all to your glory and praise in the mighty name of Jesus who have prayed. Amen. 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 Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thanks so much. All right.